Well, a very good afternoon to you. It's been a week long of court processes and legal jargons. And being a Friday, it's just good for you to take some time and hang your court somewhere else. Relax before we embark on this uh, in the coming week. But remember, it's been an eventful week uh, covering the Ashtar of uh, regarding a shower from office and the back and forth legally speaking we've been seeing a lot of that now the big question is even as we discuss that today the three judge bench actually of fred uh, fred mugambe eric ogola and anthony mrima uh, have refused actually to recuse themselves from the hearing of the impeachment case filed by impeached deputy president regarding Gashagwa. The three judges uh, at the same time say that Gashagwa has the right to appeal to, uh, to appeal the decision. The three judge bench uh, at the same time directed that the application challenging the conservatory orders stopping the swearing in of the new deputy president be had from October 29th from 10 a.m. And even as we undergo this whole legal process, the big question is what is the economic implication? Because we've looked at the political implication of this and the political process, we looked at the legal side of things. And finally, when we talk about money and how we do business, does this have any business consequences right now uh, joining us on a phone call is ken gishinga is the lead economist at mentoria economics ken thank you very much for joining us this friday afternoon talk to us when we see all this legal back and forth and the country not having yet a substantive deputy president does this have any economic consequences Many thanks, Noah. Um, indeed, the economy remains fairly resilient uh, amidst these constitutional processes. Obviously, this is not the first time that Kenya is facing a constitutional issue. You remember in 2017, there was the nullification of the presidential election. So Kenya has been here before, and it remains resilient. Um, the stock market is actually up 2.8%. Um, the currency markets are fairly stable. So one can say the macroeconomic um, environment is fairly resilient and fairly stable. Um, however, I think in the long run, there will be challenges given that now planning becomes a problem. A lot of uh, investors now lack visibility into what will happen next what's the outlook for Kenya. And uh, October tends to be a time when a lot of companies do a lot of strategic planning for the next year, for the year 2025. So to, to the extent that that planning will be conducted well, I think it remains uh, doubtful. Um, this issue has been very engrossing. We've seen a loss in productivity. Uh, and also, I think business leaders have missed an opportunity to think out through other issues happening around the world. Remember this week we had the BRIC summit happening in Russia. We had the IMF meetings in Washington. So I don't think a lot of business leaders have had an opportunity to digest what those could mean for the global economy. So I think uh, it has been a distraction, but the economic environment still remains fairly stable. And uh, before I let you go, Ken, of course, talking about uh, destruction, there, there, there is actually uh, uh, ongoing or going concerns in the country when you talk about uh, economic development and some of the decisions that are being made. Of course, we've seen the issue of Adani being at the forefront. We've seen the issue of Shah. Uh, matters to do with uh, health insurance also being at the heart of issues. But... Uh, and today, of course, over the week, we've seen what has been happening at the courts. Uh, today, we've seen the submission because there was that proposition of increasing the presidential term limit and also for the uh, elected officials from five to seven years. Again, another economic, uh, rather social discussion that tends to override uh, what really touches on Kenyan's issues, affordability of health, 
uh, matters to do with public resources. Do you think uh, this is intentional? Is it coincidental? Because it seems too well to be actually a coincidence, Ken. Well, it's difficult to say whether it's deliberate, but you're right. There are too many things happening at the same time. And some of these things will have long-term implications, whether it's on the Adani deals or whether it's on the affordable housing, uh, which many Kenyans didn't get a chance to really interrogate uh, that particular ruling. So you're right, um, there'll be a lot of things that are sort of like swept under the rug as Kenyans follow these proceedings. Uh, but I think the most important issue when it comes to the economy is the liquidity. There's that issue of that uh, IMF delayed disbursement of 113 billion that has been delayed. And I think uh, people are still waiting to see when that will happen because at the end of the day, liquidity is really what drives supply and demand. So to the extent that can happen um, sooner rather than later, I think that would be very welcome. Definitely. I, I, and I'm glad you've touched on the IMF, Ken, uh, because, uh, I mean, it's come out clearly from the IMF this week that this, the political issues are of critical importance and if not well handled, it will have uh, major ramifications. We saw that uh, with the IMF saying, you know, the ongoing Gen Z, uh, post-Gen Z involvement uh, has to be, to be handled with care uh, on, on one side. So, and locally also we've seen, like you saw the, the US ambassador uh, talking, uh, col talking matters collaboration with the IBC. In the world that we live in right now, looking at the states again on the flip side, elections ongoing, it seems Politics is what is carrying the day globally. Political agenda is at the forefront and sort of uh, economic agenda is, is coming in second. Uh, is, is that assessment fair? You're absolutely spot on. And that is something we actually identified at the very beginning of this year in January. We said uh, 2024 is going to have the most elections in history and we've seen a number of elections around the world from india to south africa to colombia to many many countries and of course the big one happening in less than 10 days uh the united states so we always knew from january 1st that 2024 will be the big political year and the consequences of those conversations will be felt economically in 2025 uh moving forward uh, but that said, I think when it comes to Kenya, a country that has kind of managed to divorce the economics and the politics, I think the big question will be around really stability. You know, Kenya is the pill of stability in the Horn of Africa. And the moment when you start getting issues of potential constitutional crisis, you know, a lot of these big multinational now start to worry, you know, whether... Uh, Kenya still will remain. So I think that's really the main concern. And the issue of unemployment, you know, the World Bank came up with a report saying unemployment is um, going to go up this year. And this is at a time when, you know, we are seeing 2.2 million KCSC candidates sitting for their exam. So the question is, will we create enough jobs for those 2.2 million candidates once they finish college, once they finish university? How will Kenya look like in five, six, seven years. So I think from those captains of industry are looking at the medium to long term question, and I think that's why it's very, very cloudy. Uh, Ken, I hope uh, your Friday is not uh, very cloudy, as you rightly put it right there. But thank you very much for your input uh, right here on the show in regards to where we are and matters social, political, economy issues that face this country and the world. Ken Gishinga is the lead economist at Mentary Economics and was able to join us on Martyr's phone. But moving on swiftly, let's head to Kilifi County where as a way of attracting investors and providing a 